Welcome to Riverbend Talon on WBGZ. Brought to you by the Halpin Music Company. Also brought to you by Mr. Matt Van Boris of Macias Insurance. I'm Dennis. And I'm Pigpen. You still are. Hi, Matt. Matt Van Boris. I'm just saying hello. <laughs> This is my personal play toy to talk to my friends, right? <laughs> I, I also want to say hello to everybody at Halpin, like John Hay. How about Mike Kreider? Have we said hello to him yet? Uh, does Alex have to come in and do that? Since I think we should make him. Right. He shakes his head from the other so, room. <laughs> yeah, Michael Kreider, Farmers uh, Insurance, uh, bringing you our engineer, which doesn't make any sense, but... <laughs> <laughs> it makes perfect sense. He's uh, a, he is he's a sponsored engineer, and he puts you know he does a lot of I don't know what he does back there. Yeah, I've had <laughs> sponsors, but it had nothing to do with what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right, that is the voice of our guest. I failed tonight. miserably too. So you know. <laughs> that is the voice of our guest. Magically just showed up. <laughs> Poof, John Johnson. <laughs> That's how you do magic on hey, the radio. Yeah. <laughs> See that. Yeah. I, I have to call my sponsor at 3 a.m. I'm having a rough night, man. No. Uh, <laughs> they changed their numbers, so I was just out of luck. <laughs> uh, so, John, you haven't been on the show with us since we've added the cameras in for the uh, the last time you were on the show. We just had the radio going, I think. Wait, cameras? Yes. No. Yes, no. Yes, yeah, no, had, it's great. It is now okay. uh, available on YouTube, these shows, which is going to make this kind of fun because you're a magician and last time we talked about magic and i don't know what we did i'll be honest i, I was hung over high or something i don't know <laughs> maybe all the above <laughs> <laughs> maybe i was too i mean you you, you were because uh, you were trying to get me to go to the clubs with you and uh, <laughs> i couldn't walk no i don't remember if any of that's true but you're on video this time you the- actually tried to get him on the back of your bike yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> After some kind of, what was it, GPS, GPC, GP, I don't know nothing about those date rape drugs, but uh, it was one of those letters. Well, you could have been sitting in the throne, my friend. (laughs) Or on the throne. (laughs) I am not a king. I do not belong on it. I do have a king-sized bed, so if a king ever shows up at my house, I'm going to be like... You have I got a place for you to sleep. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I have bed envy now. My bed's not that big. <laughs> yeah, what is it about an... I, I sleep uh, on the love seat. It don't matter. Well. <laughs> what is it about a tall guy that turns you on, Pigpen? Well, it's it's their height. Yeah. Uh, you know... It's you want to climb wait. the Matterhorn? Is that it? <laughs> 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 what are you, about 6'8", uh, eight? Uh, on my tippy toes. On your tippy toes. I'm 6'6". Six, 6'6". Six. Six, six. Next to a wee man like me, you look at least seven. So there you go. Yeah. I'm three apples high like a Smurf. <laughs> well, Pigpen, anytime you want to get a little high, just hop in the palm of my hand and I'll lift you up. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to get a little high. You know that. <laughs> so I've heard. I wouldn't know, but... <laughs> Okay, yeah, I do. Uh, so we, Speaking of getting a little high, you know, they're getting a little high down at the uh, Sea Shanty Sing Along tonight down at Morrison's <laughs> Irish Pub, there right? You go. They, they they're, are. They're getting on high, Irish whiskey. On Irish whiskey. I'm sure. I bet by now they've already fired up and they're singing songs down there. Guarantee it started at 6 o'clock. We're the ones running late. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, why are we here? Can't we do a remote or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should be down there drinking Irish whiskey. Yeah. There's so many things to choose from on a Thursday night, believe it or not. Yeah. Back in action uh, here in the last couple of weeks, we got a list of stuff to go through as far as yeah. what's going on this weekend. Th- things are firing back up. I'm happy. I, I can't wait to get out and see some live music and some live entertainment again uh, this year. Missed out last year, but. In, in addition to the sea shanties at Morrison's Irish Pub, we got the truckers at 7 p.m. down at Fast Eddie's Bone Air. Make some money tonight uh, down at uh, Hiram's Bar. They're doing the uh, karaoke contest with the $50 cash prize hosted by Sarah Lee from 7 to 10. So right after the show. Mm-hmm. That is good money you can right You go there. get that crack, crack, crack yeah. rock money. <laughs> <laughs> I've made $50 behind some bars before, but never in. No. This, you'll have to do way less for this 50 this, You just have to win. All I gotta so do, you might have to do oh, something well. to the judge. <laughs> so so all I have baby. to do is give all the other contestants a big shot of lemon juice before they go up, and I got a shot. There you go. I, you got I, a plan. I, I, I got Glad a plan. you're working on that. 
Yeah. So what, uh, what else we got? We got the open mic night with Everheart and Light, 6 to 10 p.m. at Baker's in a Hail. And so uh, – That's a steady – I was out. I was out having a, a little brunch at Baker's and Hale last Sunday, and in walks Aaron McCoy, right, looking for his uh, gig bag that he had left there the night before from the Grand Band. From the Grand Band, and and I, I, he's talking, I guess, like the owner, what you know, one of the people there and there. And I hear him say, "Well, there was a bag out in the parking lot when we pulled in this morning. Did you leave it there?" <laughs> And of course, Aaron, I don't know where I left it, but yeah, that, that I don't know why I'm relating this story. I had a point in the beginning to bring Aaron McCoy into all this, and I lost my point. Oh, the Grand Band, that's it. The Grand Band's playing at local, or at George's local brew. That is our next thing. That's how I was tying it in. I lost it all somehow in the middle. Right. I'm high. All this stuff all is this. going on? No. I am so out of it. Man. We're so I halfway am. through the list. We're, yeah, we're barely wow. through. Wow. We're yeah. just barely I'm t- impressed. touching Thursdays. That's just Thursday. Yeah. I'm missing out. I need to get out more. There's a lot of stuff happening here, man. This what song. do you think this band uh, does as far as a live performance? Strings and keys. I'm not I, sure exactly what I, that means. I bet it's all drums. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drum circle called Strings and Keys. They are uh, at Big Daddy's in Edwardsville. Started at 6. Uh Steve Klein, uh, 6 p.m. at Prairie Inn and Dorsey tonight. And then uh, Eric Lysot yeah. kicking it off at 7 at Deutz Village Inn in Pontoon Beach. That's a Thursday night in the Riverbend area. That's a Thursday night where people posted their gigs on their websites, at least, because I'm <laughs> sure there's plenty more going on. That yeah. You ever been to one of those uh, websites uh, from an establishment around here where their last uh, post was like, March. 2012 or something <laughs> right. yeah they need help and you know they're that. open hey you do that kind of stuff too don't you yeah that's one of my uh, <laughs> secret talents we were talking about earlier uh, i built uh built a few websites in my time and still do even uh since the pandemic i'm like okay what am i gonna do besides uh you know hide out in my mom's basement and cry yeah you know <laughs> well i got, got that guy no place to live you know because i'm i'm used to being on the road all the time and living in hotels yeah and so mom got tired of me so i had to move in with my girlfriend <laughs> and <laughs> Which she is got a tired great tired thing <laughs> it's a great thing by the way it's wonderful i love it there <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so happy. So fortunate. Uh, I love you, baby. I, I love you, baby. Yes. Oh, so much. Yeah. So much. I get what you're saying. I had to move back home for a short time here uh, due to a fire at my house. And uh, thanks to uh, Matt Van Voorhis of Macias Insurance, I didn't have to stay there long. And he made sure I got a little displacement money as well. So yeah, turned out pretty great. good. He's but, a smart man. Yeah, that's why he sponsors Riverbend Talent. Yeah. He's a Just smart because man. my house caught on fire. <laughs> yeah. He probably said it. <laughs> <laughs> you just accused him of arson. I know. It's out of control. Well, it is a conspiracy because it was happening while I was here. And he On a Thursday it. night. I know. Knew everyone it. knew it. Could be you anybody. Know what? Uh, everyone <laughs> Could be everybody. <laughs> You're all suspects. Everybody I know how I'll get them dudes off the radio. <laughs> We'll smoke but, uh, them out. Yeah. I wish yeah. someone had smoked me in. Now, anyway, let's. Uh, oh. <laughs> so let's talk I find about it your... weird, though. It's Erie Insurance. I don't it, know it why. That eerie. just seems like yes. a weird name for an insurance. Yeah, I like company. Erie Insurance. It, they're great. When, when when I had my little fire at my house last year, Matt Van Voorst yep. took care of me. Erie Insurance also took care of me. Their people were great. So, so now I'm going to replace awesome. all my stuff at, uh, you know where, Halpin Music. I tell you what, you just can't be local. No. Well, no. right. That's it. It is you know, the way to Local shop. people, local businesses, man, that's just the way to go. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, man, listen I listen to this guy who's on the road all the time. He's uh, like, oh, I love local. It's well, wherever <laughs> I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Wherever I go, I hit the small businesses. I avoid chains like yeah. the plague, man. Yeah. It's like I'm trying to find... Well, this is kind of telling local breweries, you know, number one, <laughs> local distilleries. You know, so I'm like, hey, hey, I'm, I'm all alone out on the road. I, I have to find something <laughs> to comfort me. <laughs> local dispensaries. Local. Yeah. Right. Oh, exactly. Local dispensaries. Right. Because yeah. uh, I spend a lot of time in California. So is yeah. most yeah. of your time on the road on the bike? No. No. no? Uh, uh Yeah. Well, for years, it was uh, my truck and pulling a, a travel trailer. Okay. So I was staying in RV parks, and that's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then I started to do a uh, – uh, added some stuff, and uh, with this – I worked through a production company, and they, like, had an idea for the show, and, but it was really equipment-intensive, so I have about 
20 some road cases in this <laughs> giant Dodge Sprinter van. And so I've been cruising around in that and then doing mainly the hotels for the last uh, X number of years. Yeah. Yeah. So. so what kind of gear you take with you? Oh, geez. I mean, I do a variety of shows. I mean, uh, a lot of the things I do. A saw in the hat box, something uh, like that, right? <laughs> I'm just trying. A curtain? Imagine you need a curtain. No, I mean, I have a, you know, a saw with eyes on it. Yeah. This so, is my seesaw. Uh, <laughs> I mean, sound system, and yeah, it's props. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah. you know, the. Guillotine? I mean, you got one of those in <laughs> your trailer? <laughs> You know, I happen to. Uh, I know you got uh, handcuffs. The girls have told me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look in my backpack. I have a bunch of uh, oh, that's it. plastic. Well, they, they're not rubber gloves, but you know. Can you handcuff a uh, pig so. pen? <laughs> I think you should handcuff him and see if he can escape. Well, you know what? Last Saturday <laughs> I'm night. I'm I'll hear the snap of the rubber glove as soon as I'm handcuffed. Last Saturday night at the lodge. I uh, was tied up in a straitjacket, and it was actually part of the show. Hanging upside down? <laughs> no, I wasn't hanging upside I've down. I've seen you do that. Yeah, I, I haven't done that for a while, but yeah, I used to do that uh, when I was uh, touring some historic theaters, and what I would do, I'd put on a free event uh, and for the townspeople and get like the fire department or a construction company come out with a ladder truck or a crane or something, and I had a gal traveling with me, and she would tie me up in a straitjacket, and direct them and then i'd be hoisted about 50 or so feet in the air and all the townspeople would be sitting there watching and wondering why <laughs> right as and then I they was, would start uh, their show as i was hanging upside down escaping that was, that was how i promoted my appearances did the you theaters. set the robe nice. on fire so nice. you had to yeah. finish before <laughs> so so how do you do that part there's always like you know a, an amount of time you got to do it in is there is there one from that trip? yeah this was i mean i said have you ever hung upside down for very long no all that blood really does rush to your head. Is you that why you're to, so beautiful at your age? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm so brain damaged at, at this That's point in why time. why he's so tall. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it did. It, it worked out all the kinks. Well, not all of them. I went to his website earlier, and it said 50 years of experience, and I'm thinking, John's that old? Yeah, how old? I went and looked. He's like, he started when he's eight. And I'm like, wow. he's, he's 60. And yeah, well, uh, I'll be 59 next month. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, you're look, looking good for 59. He does. <laughs> now, now, I and it's not because of healthy living. I think it's <laughs> probably because that blood rushes to his head. So it, it would, start it would a new have. thing for old guys. <laughs> They're all going to be hanging upside down. <laughs> <laughs> it would always crack me up on the morning news when the guy would do the 100-year-old people. All of them, almost everybody who lives to be over 100 would say either attribute it to clean living or every day smoke a cigar and shooting whiskey. There was never like somebody who lived the middle That's ground Keith that makes Richards. it to 100. You, you know, you can. Yeah, yeah uh, I lean toward the whiskey and cigars the myself. The Keith Richards formula, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, so too stubborn to die. So yeah, now, thinking about it. you being that old. Now we all like I met you back in college. Yeah, yeah. And, and same with with Dennis. So we all kind of met back at uh, in that era. And that was my second round of college. Yeah, I, I think that was my first. The truth is coming out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter how many tours of duty you've done. We're not going <laughs> well, to hold that against anybody here. Certainly, I'm not going to. Well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, man. That was uh, quite a while back, and mm-hmm. you've been you were doing magic then. But I didn't realize how long you had been doing it at that time since yeah. you were eight. Yeah, I actually started when I was six. Started trying to learn things and and do it for my you know, immediate family members. Of course, I failed miserably. <laughs> you, well, you don't start off good at usually yeah, anything. No. I mean, and I was trying difficult sleight of hand stuff. And, well, you know, thank goodness my parents were indulgent. They're like, okay, yeah, okay. Ah. Do you have anything else? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. you know, keep working, John. Keep right. working. <laughs> You're trying hard. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and that's all that matters. Right, right. <laughs> So that they, that's a uh, John Johnson John Johnson Magician dot com. Yes, right. John Johnson Magician dot com. Right. That is it. Uh, you get to see me and some fancy artwork, and uh, maybe uh, get a little background on me. And well, since the pandemic hadn't been back here, I haven't done a whole lot locally, except uh, for about the last uh, month, a uh, month plus, been down at the lodge, which is 
behind the old Elijah Pease there at uh, 401 Piasaw. Right. And it's uh, Russ Smith, who also has Bossa Nova. Mm-hmm. Yep. So he's put together a great place there, and it's called the Lodge because you go inside the place, and it's, you know, it looks like a lodge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as soon as the weather warms up some, he'll be opening up uh, the doors in front more. It has that great patio out there. And Friday and Saturday nights, been having bands. So yeah. on Saturday nights, I'm with the Mad Baileys. That's, uh, ah, Jay uh, Sabo. There. Jay Sabo yeah. and Greg. Uh, is it Greg Heiss. Heiss. Greg Heiss. Heiss. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure exactly how to pronounce yeah. that, so I thought it was Heiss. I, and, and he's it, a great guy. Yeah, I, I've known uh, him since I was a little kid, man. Yeah. And Jay Sabo, ni- nice gentleman, good players, too. Oh, man. yeah. And that's the reason I ended up down there, because I had uh, – on some charity uh, performances that uh, Jay happened to be at, and then I ran into him, and, and he goes, "Hey, he goes, I'm playing down at the lodge." He goes, "You know, see, I, I know you're here because you know the pandemic and stuff. So if you're feeling rusty and want to work yeah. on some stuff, he goes, come on down. I'd be happy to have you do some magic during the band breaks." I'm like. Well, that sounds like fun to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if I remember right, you've also done a little stand-up comedy. And uh, the thought just crossed my mind that that's what a lot of comics do when they, whenever they want to try out their act. They'll find a place like that and then go down and try out the jokes. So uh, trying out a magic trick that doesn't work out, that, that doesn't probably go well for a magician. Uh, you know, I've seen that guy really screw up a trick. Yeah, you want to avoid that. <laughs> No. A bad joke they forget kind of quickly. But. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I know. Because <laughs> all the comedians save a good joke to follow up that one. Right. Just, the, the new one, just in case. You ever uh, bomb a magic trick? Why? <laughs> I almost died once on stage, literally. That would be right? bombing a That's magic trick. That's what I'm trick. getting at. There you go. That's literally. bombing. <laughs> I was, uh, they used to have a comedy club and, and some of the like one-night comedy clubs and hotels in the St. Louis area. And I was uh, finishing up with a straitjacket escape, and a strap got wrapped around my neck, and I, all my air got cut off. Wow. And it was, you know, it was a comedy club, so it was a comedy escape, so everybody's <laughs> laughing. I'm doing stuff. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, I'm turning blue, and I'm, I'm thinking, wow, this I guy's am, real. Man. <laughs> I am literally going to drop dead on this stage, yeah. and these people are going to go, oh, he's hilarious. <laughs> uh oh. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I could feel panic welling up because i couldn't breathe yeah. and i thought man i'm gonna black out uh if i panic i'm certainly dead because everyone's not going to get it yeah so i was able to have some presence of mind and said i have to get out of this because you know i want to live i want to <laughs> live man i want to live <laughs> so i managed to somehow untangle myself and get out and Oh, what a wow. relief, yeah. man. What a yeah. relief. Whew. Of course, and then as foolish as I am, what do I do? I continue doing oh, a straitjacket yeah. escape right. and uh, and try to make it even crazier by uh, duplicating Houdini's upside-down escape. <laughs> and my latest thing I'm working on is not only being bound in a straitjacket, but also being bound in about 30 feet of chain and padlocks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess... Uh, you know, it's just it's never enough. Yeah. It's never enough. I, huh. If I ever... If if they find me hanging, it won't be in front of a crowd. It'll probably be in a closet dressed like Superwoman, like David Carradine. But I digress from that. When did you, like, so when I went and saw, I took my kid and my daughter to see the, the one of those truck things where they're jumping trucks and all that. And I, and I thought to myself, when I saw this gal jump, do a flip in a truck, how many trucks do you wreck before you do that? And, who, mm. and how do you decide to get into something where you, how do you decide to get into something where you could die, man? Like, like you could literally die on stage. How, at what point did you go, it's worth it? I don't know. Well, first of all, there has to be some stupidity involved in that. <laughs> it has to do with that drinking we were talking about. <laughs> I, know. I don't know. I may have, may have fallen off a building or two on my head when I was young. <laughs> but I'm, well, that, that obviously, you figured out where that trick went wrong on you, though, where you got why the strap got wrapped around your neck. Uh, yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. I mean, it's, it's something you kind of you get in a situation like that, you try and forget it. I mean, me, I'm. Okay, here's how foolish I am. I, uh, I, I, I go back in history, and I say, uh, what's, what's the strangest or craziest thing that uh, magicians, etc., have done that you may not see too often that, hey, maybe I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, the key word is maybe. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's the, that's the big right. part that I want to know about. And so, oddly <laughs> enough... People have helped me along the way. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I 
<laughs> They've encouraged you. Yeah. Yes. They, uh, well, give uh, it the parents. <laughs> well, I was I was a teenager, and my sisters are, are older than I am, and my my sister was one of them was dating the chief of police of Wood River at that time. And he knew I was into the Houdini thing, the escapes, the magic and whatnot. So what did he do? He gave me a pair of police handcuffs <laughs> and taught me how to get out of them. Which <laughs> nice. was kind of double the utility. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that trick has paid off time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> Never on stage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, for you, I imagine that handcuff trick's a little bit different than, than most people. They'll look at that and go, well, he's got small hands. That's how he got out of that. Yeah. John's Big hands, hands are massive. <laughs> I could, hi- I could hide behind those hands. Right? Yeah. You, what is that? Is that a Volkswagen in your hand, John? <laughs> you can pretty much hide a deck of cards in those hands, right? Yeah. It'll completely oh, yeah. cover them up. Yeah. Well, yeah it's just it's wow. crazy. Yeah. yeah, just for the folks uh, watching on radio. And you <laughs> you asked earlier what I love about a big man. That's it, the big hands. Right. Yeah, they are. They're huge. Uh, he the spanks well. Cards, you know, nothing to it. So, so yeah, uh, but you know what? uh that's an assumption a lot of people make because they'll look at my hands. They're like, "Holy cow, those things are huge!" I'm talking about my hands. Yeah, and <laughs> you know what they say about a man with big hands? And they're looking yeah, up at you. Feet, so. Big shoes, big gloves, all that stuff. Now they say there's so. an exception to every rule. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfectly normal, I swear. Yeah. I am as God yeah. made me. <laughs> so Yeah, where were you going? But it, what I'm saying is that they automatically think, oh, well, yeah, those big hands help. Well, they can or they or can't. They can. Right. Uh, it's, there's, it's just very. It wouldn't be good for handcuffs, I wouldn't think. Yeah. Well, no, as far as the, I guess you're referring to the old story about Houdini. He had, his, had the thick wrist and, the, you know, the hands were pretty much the same size around as his wrist, so the whole thing was that he could somehow pull right. them out like that. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> no. Unless you no. get some big like clown type hand, yeah. <laughs> you know, oversized. <laughs> well, I have clown hands, so <laughs> <laughs> they're even bright red. <laughs> But then when it comes to cars... You should see a doctor. <laughs> you've got a little extra uh, hand there to maybe deceive people with, right, and hide things. Oh, I have some extra hands, absolutely. Extra. <laughs> well, well, show us an example of these uh, hands. And well, for the folks uh, listening in on uh, radio, I'll try to I'll try to do a little play-by-play, but we do do the video. So uh, if yeah. you get a chance, go back and, and check out the YouTube video, all at cottonmouth.org. And I hope Smash is listening because he's like, how could magic work on the radio? Right. This is how. This well, that's the smash. question we're answering tonight. Uh, and I think so. we've already performed some magic leading up to this point. I mean, it's all in how you perceive the magic, right? Oh, I'm perceiving. That was the sound of cards, <laughs> by the way. That was. <laughs> so we have... Excuse you, me. You have to believe they're cards, folks. Yeah, flying from <laughs> hand to hand yeah. uh, yes. through the air. Now, I, uh, I've been very lucky because I've had two major mentors in my magic formative years. I, and I used to, uh, my dad would take me and drop me off at, uh, was, this man's name was Frank Everhart. He was a magic legend in Chicago, and his wife just happened to be from this area, and his wife just happened to be my uh, brother-in-law's aunt. Ah, so he found, So when he retired from Chicago, he came back to the area and found out that I was interested in magic and so he cut a deal. I had to mow grass, mow their grass <laughs> and trim their shrubs. And after I did that, then I could go into the house and I'd have the magic lessons. That's a way better deal than Robert Johnson got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no crossroads involved. Yeah, you might be related. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I don't even get why that story's bad. I traded my soul to the devil. Who, yeah. who wants to drive a Kia? Bob Dylan's still alive. It didn't affect him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So oh, yeah. after selling your soul to the, de- I mean, oh, after yeah. selling your soul your car, to your, your Kia. <laughs> yeah. So, so the there's different kind of magicians. I kind of, kind of think I'm a general practitioner, but I focus more on sleight of hand, uh, and uh, that's using ordinary objects to create the magic. And there's no uh, you know, hidden gimmicks or stuff like that. And uh, the stage version of that is called manipulation, right? Uh, which comes in handy. Okay. <laughs> and for that, I uh, moved to, I was probably, 
I was about 19, 20, and I moved to Michigan, and he, this man had retired, and he had toured the world many times, performed for royalty all over the world. He was well-known in magic circles. His name was Neil Foster, and he had a, a school. He took a limited number of students, and so I, I trained with him. I lived up there for six months, and I'd regularly practice 10, 12 hours a day on my stage sleight of hand doing things. And mm-hmm. that was... I notice a lot of magicians talk and move their hands at the same time. That's to me. I'm keying on as he's trying to deceive us already. That's just me, but you know, for the people watching on the radio, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. So, so you're shuffling the cards a little. Yeah. So I'm just like I'm shuffling the cards. I'm cutting them with one hand, and I can. You know, there's a lot of ways you can fan cards. Just. Right. Uh, I just uh, split the deck in half and made a fan in each hand. Mm-hmm. And there's just a lot of different things you can do that. Sometimes I'll use a, a deck of cards that has a very colorful back, and you can make all sorts of different designs and things like that. Okay. So, so, uh, that's, so uh, that, that's part of the act. But what I would like to show you Oh, is, now he's breaking out a rope. Uh, this ought to be good. Because Tying a pig pen. <laughs> this is one of the uh, the first. His hands aren't just big; they're warm. He's uh, reaching uh, under the table <laughs> right now. I'm just they saying. Are. <laughs> and I have long arms too. <laughs> At least fingers, yeah. you know. <laughs> this is better than the Christmas party. All oh, the magic fingers. <laughs> magic fingers. That's right. right. So, uh, this was one of the first things I learned from Frank Everhart. And by the way, his son is also a magician, and he's we're we're like brothers. And he's been down in Key West for like 20-some years doing magic. So I have one rope. It's kind of long, like me. I have one rope. It's kind of a medium size. Okay. Like uh, Dennis. Yeah. And oh, I have <laughs> and, a little short and, one. And a wee one. <laughs> <laughs> that pig pile. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm wearing my Flip the Frog shirt. So, so it's, a, no it's three different there. size ropes. All right. And being a magician, you like to change things around a little bit. Uh-huh. So I'm bringing them all up, so three Looping. ropes, six ends, right. and they're all nice and even on top. Right. right? Little loops if you're coming magician, out the you bottom. you can snap your fingers and stretch them out right. so they all become the same size. Oh, Ooh. wow. Check that out. Yeah. All right. And you can all take right. a look at them. Yeah, there's one. Right. Switch them up there. There's another one. Yeah. And we'll do this last one here. So right. the there's three different size ones. ropes have become the same size. Right. I right in front of our eyes. All sorts of funny stuff with them. And folks, uh, his sleeves are rolled up, yes. just so you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. So what happens next is magicians kind of go at things circular sometimes. I started with three ropes all different sizes. I made them all the same size. But now I'm going to go right back to where I started. There's that one that's medium size. There's that little short one. And yeah. And back to the long one. And, of course, you could check them out. They're just three pieces of rope. Wow. That's pretty cool. Right. right in front of our very eyes. Big, in front of your very eyes. Pig pile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, what are you doing with the super glue over uh, there? Come on. I don't know what I'm doing. With. I, was, I was trying to It didn't to work like for I'm you. Gonna, it no, didn't work. I was just going to see if I did some googly gock with it. If, it just, if, some, if the, I wanted to see if the rope was magic or you. He tried so to snort it. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, they so are like, white ropes. Maybe if I snort <laughs> one up my nose, no one will see that. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel like doing magic. There's plenty of room up there. I've <laughs> hollowed it out. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I've seen guys that will blow up these like long, skinny balloons, and all of a sudden, it's like sword swallowing, only with a balloon. Yeah. Right. Oh, uh, uh, I... So I saw kind of crazy. One of the weirdest ones I saw that those long balloons you're talking about. It, yeah. was, uh, it was the this has been a long time ago. The Bindle Stiff Family oh, Sideshow yeah. Circus. You know them sure. guys? Okay. I don't know them, but I'm familiar, familiar with, with them. Right, with I haven't seen them for years. But they they they're doing their bit and they take it and stick it up the nasal passage and draw it out the mouth and they're doing the between you know where the balloon goes in the nose and out the mouth and and the guy's got a blue one doing it and the girl's <laughs> got a green one and then they kiss and they swap. But they were brother and sister. It was the Bindlestead family circus. I'm just saying, it was some weird stuff going on there. You ever, Maybe it was a different kind of family. They, <laughs> all right, I, I, I'm okay with it. I, I tell you, the, the craziest. Have you ever seen the Bindlestead family circus? No, I have. I've seen clips of them online, and uh, I have a buddy because I, I did a, a circus tour 
and uh, he was familiar with them, and he knows some of them. He's from a longtime circus family. He's like third generation. Wow. I, I uh, saw him up in Michigan at a place, the Rainbow Farm, up in, outside Vandalia, oh, Michigan. Oh, yeah, the Rainbow Farm. And, and uh, That got raided on 9-11, right? Yeah, uh, no, it wasn't 9-11. <laughs> I it can't was, remember yeah, his clothes. Uh, uh, but they, uh, the guy was juggled. So we're all sitting crisscross. You know, it's, it's an old-school sideshow, like in a tent. Yeah. Everyone's sitting crisscross applesauce. There's a slack <laughs> rope, and the guy's juggling machetes over the top of everybody. But he's sitting crisscross applesauce, and I'm like, okay, if this goes wrong, you watch this family pack up this tent and get out of it. Like, <laughs> suddenly someone ends up with a machete in the head. I bet they move quick to get out of here. Yeah. But that, that, so yeah, the, I, you've heard of them, but never seen them. That was, uh, yeah. they, they were a wild show to see. Yeah, you know? mentioned sideshows. So I've also, uh, uh, I was with, uh, for a short time, was with the world's uh, oldest continuously operating sideshow called The World of Wonders. Yeah. And I, uh, I had to leave. After just uh, a few dates, because uh, the gal who traveled with me, she got sick. But uh, what was cool was that I did. I got. I got. I really enjoyed doing a lot of stuff with them. And one of the things I did, and I still do, fire eating, which I just did last Saturday oh, night wow. there at the lodge. I did fire eating and straight jacket escape. I've seen you do that one. Uh, the what? fire eating. I've seen that one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember one one time down at Shea, Maryland's in that little yeah. field next you were doing <laughs> yeah. some kind of a festival or something going on downtown. It was. I, th- I think uh, Cat Daddy. Yeah, Cat yeah, yeah. Daddy yeah it was, was, Cat was Daddy. sponsoring that, and it was uh, that may have been the Halloween. Yeah, I think uh, you're party right. Thing because they set up a scaffolding, and I was hanging mm-hmm. upside down from the straight jacket. Yeah. I did. I did all sorts of fire things. I had mm-hmm. these uh, big metal bowls on the end of ropes. And I was yeah, swinging yeah. them around the revolving bowls of fire. <laughs> nice. See? And uh, where did I get that from? I, you know, some guy that did it years ago in Australia. But I, I saw it in a book. I'm like, oh, there's something I can do that's really weird. Yeah. There's something I could either do or not do and hurt myself really bad. <laughs> I mean, this is most of your choices during the day. Can I do this? And how bad could I hurt myself? And how many people am I endangering when I do this? <laughs> Do you like to taste a burnt food by any chance? I mean, you breathe fire, so maybe just like charcoal. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I go to the barbecue and just get the charcoals out. Of me. Uh, Have you ever done the fi- walking on fire thing, the walking on coals? Oh, what, you think I'm crazy? Well, <laughs> no. yes. I, I, For I, sure. I, you know, I, there's not many people I look at and go, that's kind of crazy. Usually uh-huh. I'm like, that looks fun. <laughs> but, yeah, some of the stuff you do, I don't want to try. Yeah. Well, and I don't recommend it either. I, I mean, it's, uh, I've had uh, uh, people, like, oh, I'd like to learn that fire eating. I'm like, well, you want to die? Yeah, right. Because okay? yeah. you can't, can't make a mistake because if you're lucky when you make a mistake, you just burn yourself severely or torch your lungs uh, yeah. or you, you, you combust. Right. Well, and you end up looking like Rocky Dennis. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably not a good thing if, you, if your and face flames up. I think, I, I can't say for sure, but... Most of the people I know that have spent any length of time eating fire, they've hurt themselves. Right. At some had, point, yeah. yeah. And I have not. Wow. I have not. Knock on wood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, on my head. Yeah. So, oh, I know it's like a dad joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, so I mean, I, and I was just thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, because all these people I talk to, like, oh, I, you know, I burnt this or this, or here's this scar, here's that scar. And I'm like, Oh, so, not me. And you just did it this past weekend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just did you, got, it you got anything planned like that for this weekend? Uh, I'll be doing magic again Saturday night. I'm not going to be doing any fire eating or the straight check escape. Uh, Why'd they ban you from that? No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. Well, I would imagine that happened. Well, well, they didn't, but the fire department. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, we're going to get I had this no idea you were going to fire that oh stuff gosh. up in here. You know? yeah. That's what they say to pigmen all the time, but it means something different. <laughs> Sure. So I've been trying to, as you mentioned, I've been at this a long time. So every Saturday for every set that I do there, I've been doing different magic or, you know, different stunts. Yeah. And I haven't repeated anything yet. And this has been going on, I don't know, six to eight weeks, I'm guessing. Yeah. So, and I'm doing two sets. But you had quite of a hiatus there with the whole uh, whatever happened last year that we don't mention anymore. Yeah, That's magic. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to word. forget last year, so, yeah, and yeah, then that well, way yeah, it doesn't happen the, again. The world is. The <laughs> right. world is so, sure. Six to eight weeks, and you haven't repeated a trick. Yeah. I'm impressed by that because I've watched 
hours of The Amazing Jonathan, and all he does is the same three gags over and over. His whole career yeah. was based on three gags. Well, that's why he's famous, because yeah. uh, he did those three over and over again until he perfected them and whatnot, and I guess I'm not <laughs> well, that smart. Well, <laughs> well, I can tell you his gags. All right, who's, I need a, 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 someone from the audience. You got, you got, got $5? Okay, let me have that. And he puts it in his pocket and walks off. There's gag number one. <laughs> gag number two is, uh, you know, I, I, anyway, I don't know. I really didn't pay that Gag number two is what's going on Friday hey, night. Oh, the the, the grand band and friends are having a big party for Again. Mike Coleman. Eight o'clock uh, at Shea Maryland's uh, Happy downtown to hear that's on going Friday. On down yeah. there. Uh, apparently, the open mic is still going on at Raging Cajun. Haven't seen a, a post there in a while, but I do occasionally see videos that look like that's what's happening. All right. Uh, Borderline seven p.m. at Fast Eddie's. Bon Air and Alton. Yep. Ed and Cherry seven to ten at the Lodge at the Lovejoy. That's their uh, debut performance there. Ooh, Friday nice. night. Looking forward to that. Ed right. and Sherry. Good luck. Yeah. Rogers and Neen House out at Bakers and Hale from 7 to 11. That's All, that reschedule I warned you about. Also their yeah. first gig. Yeah. At, Ever. At Bakers. Ever. <laughs> Rogers yeah, and right. Neen House. <laughs> they're brand new. This uh, is the they're older than John Johnson. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> they got I'm albums. so happy someone is. <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably have albums yeah, older yeah. than you. Yeah, yeah they Straight go. out of the birds there, right? Yeah, I'm so happy I'm absolutely. well preserved. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Dave Horton Acoustic Country, 7 o'clock at the Moose and Wood River. Ashley, Ethan, and Jacob, 7 o'clock at Red's Tavern in Bunker Hill. TBD, 7 to oh. 10 at the Outlet at Edison's in Edwardsville. Oh. TBD is one of the best bands going out there. Right. You can have the next one. All right. Let's see. Where are we at? Root Digging Nation. I like it. Yeah. And they're 930 at Patrick's in Granite City. And then Joe Smith's 30th birthday bash with Phase 2, 7 o'clock at Owls 520 in Granite City. Uh, all on Friday night. John Evans, 7 to 10 at George's Local Brew in Jerseyville. Lanny and Julie at uh, Time Out Sports Bar in Troy at 7. And Boulder Dash, 6 to 10 at Copper Fire in Belleville. That's your Friday night. That's a pretty good Friday night, man. That is. Well, that that is so. Saturday well, is much longer. Well, so, uh, right. We'll get to that in a minute. You know, we, we, we very quickly brushed over the whole uh, web design thing. We were, oh. ha- we were having this conversation before the show started yes. about a business you were in. And uh, it was interesting to me because you said it was organic tomatoes, but a huge variety? Oh, yeah. That's uh, one of the projects I'm helping a client with. He uh, grows 300-plus varieties of heirloom tomatoes, and he's located out in eastern Pennsylvania. And that's that's the main thrust of his business. But he does uh, he has an e-com store, which uh, being a former chef, that he is not me, and he uh. offers a different uh, food products too. So I've been helping with one section of that and uh, helping um, him grow that part of his business. And you're doing it through web design strictly. Uh, mainly, I'm doing that. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 optimizing his website for search. Ah, nice. So, nice. so that means that when people are looking for the things he has to offer, you know, be it on being they're using Google, Yahoo, whatever search engine, uh, when they're searching for those things, his his products and his store are going to pop up first. They're going to be on page one of Google. Now, I bet there are a lot of people that have businesses that wish they could make that happen how do they like you said john johnson magic.com mm-hmm. how do people oh, john get a, johnson magician magician dot com. magician, uh, magician. Yeah. how how do people get a hold of you for this type of thing because i know a lot of people with businesses that wish they would come up when people search for them yeah, yeah thank you and um i'm easy to talk to and, and happy to help uh i offer a free consultation and and one free magic trick <laughs> <laughs> Just helping with the marketing. It's, it's, it's worth it to see the magic yeah. trick live. So. Infobankmediaseo.com. Okay. Infobankmediaseo.com. I know it's a mouthful, but that will get you That's there. That's she said. And, and if you uh, do a search, because SEO is short for search engine optimization, and that's just doing ah. things to websites both on the website and connected to the website to get them to show up uh, as high as possible in the search rankings and the search engines. Yeah, that. Uh-huh. so when, when we touched on it earlier, yeah. we just talked about your web design. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. Uh, I mean, people, a lot of people, uh, 
me included, have websites that need help. Right. But uh, they can go to you for that or, or, or a complete design. But that right, uh, yeah. uh, even more already have websites that they might be happy with, but they cannot figure out how to get it to pop. Yeah, that's it. So I can... I can build a website from, from scratch. I can update the website and then do all the uh, the, the tweaks that are needed to uh, get it to rank. Uh, I do social media type things, uh, putting together you know, social media strategies to also drive traffic to, to either your social media page or to your website too. I was nice. about to bring nice. that up because uh, we're seeing a trend. Of less and less bands using websites and just going straight to Facebook to do everything from there. Uh, any advice for someone who's thinking that way? Is it better to have a website? or uh, Absolutely. You own a website. Uh, you don't own your Facebook. Right. Uh, you, they can kick you off any day. They can kick you off. They can uh, uh, change anything they want because it's theirs. And a lot of people do that because, say, for example, Facebook, because, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly simple to set something up and fairly simple to be able to put up videos or pictures. So it's an easy way out. But whatever you put out on Facebook is throttled. You may have, there you say, 5,000 followers on Facebook, and you put something out, and maybe 10% of your followers will actually see that in their news feed. Right. And they may not see it in a timely manner. Uh, it yeah. may be something. Um, right. Oh, oh, I have something coming up right now. So you put it out there, and two days later, oh, I just saw that on Facebook. Yeah. I missed it. That's why yeah. Pigpen shares our Thursday night promo on Sundays. Right, that, that's the only time I look on Facebook is on Sunday. It's when it shows up in his feed. Right? Yeah, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a glitch with Facebook. Uh, uh, Tried to bail you so, out for a change with a website. You own it. You yeah. own it. I mean, you own the website. You can do it with you it. own the domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's yours. It's yours, <clears throat> and you know you can put there whatever you want. You're not uh, subject to someone else's rules and, and regulations. Yeah, for the most part, I mean John are, Johnson Magician dot com. Yeah, John Johnson for an example, com. right? Uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, like the Infobike Media SEO dot com. Right. So. Right. Excellent. Well, that, I, I think that was a, that's a, a good piece of the search engine optimization. Yep. Is a good piece of information to put out there because. I know people who ask, how do you get this, you know, to get your stuff to show right. up? And I don't know. I can't get my own to show up. Mm. Uh, I say I use a magnifying glass. To, no, no. But that, that's, uh, that's totally cool uh, that you got that going in addition to the magic thing because now for the past year, while you haven't been able to travel, it gave you a, a way to make a little bit of dough and uh, something to do. All right. Parallel question. Okay. Magicians don't tell how they do their tricks. True. How about marketers? Do they tell how they do their trick to get the right amount of money? <laughs> uh, well, uh, uh, kind of along the same lines, you would tell them enough that you think they need to know. Right. I mean, uh, <laughs> tell I mean, them enough uh, to sink them into the trick. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to get on my high horse or anything here, but there's a lot of uh, uh, technical aspects of it that most people would just be bored to tears with. Right. Yeah. And they're thinking like, Oh, I have to do what and what mm. and what? What did you what? say? It's like, you know, how can I do all that and run my business too? Yeah. It's like, you know, this eat me up. I just, I, I don't have the time. I don't have the time. And, and then you have to have the, you have to learn. There's a yeah. huge learning curve. So, right. and I've you know, studied Google and I was mentioned earlier that I t- took a bunch of tests through Google and had a, a whole bunch of certifications for them for everything that Google offers, and 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 part of that includes search. And there's more than just search involved, you know, because there's search, there's ads, there's and there's different variety of ads. So there's all sorts of stuff that's really pretty dry, mm-hmm. except <laughs> if it's happening to your site and you're having success with it, you're right. like, oh, this is the greatest <laughs> stuff in the whole world. Yeah. John, I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> the, the background is, of it is boring, but the results are not. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, spending you know, hours a day with a deck of cards in my hand. Yeah, For most people, they're like, Oh uh, gosh! Yeah. Just you know, pull my teeth out now. But then, when you see the result, the cool, the cool, amusing, uh, mysterious, amazing, impossible things you can do with it, right. and it's like, 
Whoa. Well, I think uh, uh, one of the first things that pops in my mind when I see a guitar player that's really playing, yeah, he practiced a lot. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, and I understand how hard it is to practice that much to get that good, and that's what really blows my mind about what's going on there because I know he's put the time in. And then every once in a while, some kid picks up a guitar and just plays really good, and you're like, how'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> He's 14. How has he logged 10,000 playing hours yeah. already? Oh, yeah, yeah the, the 10,000 yeah. hours to, to, to mastering something. <laughs> uh, only so. one thing I've done that much. We can't talk about that here. So let's talk about uh, you're playing You're playing Saturday down. Yes, uh, yeah. we got a whole Saturday to go through uh, here. But Saturday, you're going to be down at the lodge behind the Love jo- the Elijah uh, Pease. <clears throat> And uh, like you were saying earlier, a neat place. Uh, if, if, Beautiful. If yeah. you haven't been down there, it's worth going down just to check the place out. It's really neat. Yeah, great bartenders, be- too. Uh, Greg Franklin, Tom Yenny behind the bar. Uh, and uh, on Saturday night, it would be you know, the Mad Baileys. Don't we mention uh, uh, yeah. Jay and Greg previously? Jay, Jay Sable and Greg Heiss. And now you, yeah. you said the name Greg Heiss, and I, and I offhandedly said, oh, I've known him my whole life. And I was trying to think back, and I can picture him and his brother, but I swear, as I tried to, I can't picture his brother's name, but he, a D, maybe Heiss. He, uh, I think I was in his wedding when I was a little kid, and I puked all over the <laughs> ring. I swear I was the ring bearer, and I puked all over the ring in, in his older brother's Classic. wedding. Well, you shouldn't and, have swallowed it. Well, I don't remember doing any of that. I, I just remember they put me in this little white tux that I didn't really want to be in. But uh, yeah, learning how that to swallow too. it. So at Jay a young likes age. to needle Greg about uh, his resemblance to Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, yeah I can see is, that. Uh, there is. Haven't there is. seen him for since he was probably in his twenties. But yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you even expect a fist to come right out of his beard and hit you like a third arm. No. So that that's that's starting at what time down there at uh, uh, seven o'clock? Music starts. Uh, my first set is usually oh, eight ish. Eight ish, and, yeah. and now do, is it like the band plays? Then you do your magic. Then the band plays again. Yes, excellent. And that's then I'll do another do set, and then the band will do another set. So what are you doing nice. about ten minutes, fifteen, something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, roughly somewhere around in there. 10 yeah. to 15. Yeah. That's better than a Carson spot. I think you get like four minutes for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except, uh, well, there are some variations at it. If you're given more time, it's like, ooh. <laughs> and then, of course, getting called over to sit down with Johnny, then that was the holy grail. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. I never got on the Carson show. Yeah. But you did get to uh, perform magic in some amazing places, right? Oh, yeah. Las yeah, Vegas. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Uh, I, I've worked some clubs in Vegas. I, I still to this day, I love doing street magic. I love going down to uh, uh, downtown Vegas on Fremont Street and do magic. I've uh, worked uh, on a number of luxury cruise liners, uh, doing cruises, say, from uh, you know, Manhattan to New York City, out to Bermuda, or out of Miami, to, uh, down as far south as Barbados. Right. I've, nice. uh, I've met uh, through uh, performing. I was doing a, a big uh, fundraising. I was part of a big fundraising program at uh, – uh, the hotel in Century City, uh, that's the L.A. area. It's like the, the business district of Beverly Hills. Right. And Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Stewart were the guests of honor. Nice. And I got to have a one-on-one with uh, Ronald Reagan and his wife, Nancy, for about 10 minutes, just small talk. And I got to meet and talk with Jimmy Stewart. Oh, uh, Nancy's faces look like that forever. <laughs> I can't help it. And it was fantastic. Yeah, no, I've been very, very fortunate. Yeah. Uh, What's the uh, uh, the big place in, uh, I think it was L.A. Magic House, is it called? Uh, in, Magic? Uh, it's right at the foot of the Hollywood Hills, the Magic Castle. Castle. Magic Castle, yeah. yeah. I've uh, been able to <clears throat> perform and visit there a number of times through the years. Uh, one of the, not the last time I was there, but the time before, I go in and you have to wear a you know, very strict dress code. So I had a dark suit on, hair slicked back, and I have... Would some consider a resemblance to Penn Jillette yes, from Penn and yes, Teller? Yes, absolutely. So, and it just so happened that that night that Teller was there without Penn. Oh, <laughs> probably talking about him. So, <laughs> all yeah, night long, would have been fun. <laughs> all all night long, Teller has given me the stink eye. <laughs> yeah. he's looking. You know, every time we walk around somewhere, he's like staring at me like. But right, he doesn't say on? a word. Right. Who is this guy? <laughs> he never says anything. <laughs> doesn't say a word. <laughs> and then one of the one of the main guys of the place, he's an older gentleman, he come up to me, oh, I thought you'd be here too. <laughs> 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 and then finally at the end of the night, uh, the group I was with, 
And the group teller was with, well, you know, we're the last ones at the bar. Nice. And, and then one of the guys comes over and he comes up to me and goes, you have been driving Teller nuts all <laughs> night long, man. He's like, he's dying to know who you are. He goes, so come on over. And so, you know. They introduced and whatnot, and had nice chat and stuff. So that was cool. See, that mm-hmm. would that, you, you got to seize the moment right there. You yeah. just said, "Hey, Teller, if you ever get angry with Penn and you need a new partner, like I could fit right in. You can call me Gin. You oh, can I call told me him. Win. I said, yeah. I said, you ever need a double for Penn? Oh yeah, give me yeah. a shout. Absolutely, man. <laughs> and people around the country have mistaken me for Teller, and I can't tell you how many times I've signed his autograph. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you can check out uh, John on a Saturday night down at the uh, Lovejoy, the Lodge at Lovejoy, uh, with uh, Jay Sable and Greg Heise uh, playing music and John doing the uh, set breaks. Also on Saturday night, Troy Taylor presents an evening with the St. Louis Exorcism. So he's doing a, a talk on that with dinner at the uh, Best Western Premier uh, Hotel in Alton. That's uh, 44 bucks a person for that one. Uh, also going on Saturday night, Naked Soul, 2 to 6, Borderline 7 o'clock at Past Eddie's in Alton. Pianos, 9 o'clock at Raging Cajun. Uh, the Doppelganger, 7 to 11 at <laughs> Bakers and Hale and Godfrey. Tanglefoot at Uncle Al's in Jerseyville. Philip Russo, 7 to 10 at Georgia's local Brew in Jerseyville. I was John Duo, 3 to 7 at Grafton Winery. Gatorhead, 7 o'clock at the Hog Pit in Grafton. Hookie, 6 to 10 at Wild Pickens Winery in Chesterfield. Lickety Split, 9 30 at uh, Patrick's in Granite City. <laughs> Dave Horton Acoustic Country, 7 o'clock at the uh, Holiday Shores Marina in Edwardsville. Cabin Fever at 8 o'clock at Reds and Bunker Hill. Rock Bottom, 9 o'clock at the Corner Keg in Highland. Pat Liston, also up in Highland on uh, Saturday night at 7 o'clock at L. Flanagan's. Lanny and Julie, 6 o'clock at the Camp Station in Staunton. Antics, 8 to 12 at Roosters in Staunton. And uh, Conquest, uh, putting on a show with Divine Sorrow, 8 o'clock at Diamond Music Hall in St. Peter's. That's all on Saturday night and still a list to get through for Sunday, Big Ben. Well, what do we got? We got Naked Soul, 1 to 5, and then Cross the Line, 6 to 10, down at the Bone Air. We got the Mad Bailey. 2 p.m. at Roper's Regal Beagle on Sunday. Kurt Copeland, open mic 4 to 7 at Uncle Al's up in Jerseyville. Scott and Carl, 2 to 6 p.m. Sunday at Grafton. Catfish Willie, I like that name, 2 p.m. at the Hog Pit in Grafton. Uh, naughty and Nice, I that uh, yeah, that's all right. 2 sure. to 6 p.m. at Wild Pickens uh, in Chesterfield, Illinois. The Grand Band, 2 p.m. Hidden Lake Winery in Aviston, Illinois. Uh, Dave Horton Acoustic Country, 4 p.m. at Big Daddy's in Edwardsville. 1 p.m. Somebody might be at Who Dats no. in Collinsville. Maybe not. Remember, uh, yeah. Public display of affection. That's the thing you'd get in trouble for in junior high. Uh, yep. We're going to be at 5 p.m. at Patrick's in Granite City, Illinois. Yeah, we did the uh, Grand Band one already, I think. All yeah. right, and then uh, my old buddy Pat Liston uh, from Mama's Pride, 2 p.m. at the Boathouse in St. Charles, Missouri. All going on this weekend, as well as uh, John Johnson Magic, and uh, he's uh, whipping the cards out again. He's going to do us another magic trick before we uh, take off and uh, head towards whatever comes next. Clark Howard, right? I I don't know anymore. (laughs) This is Clark Howard. Save your money. (laughs) Yeah. Something I wanted to mention there. I'm going to do some blatant promotion here. All right. Good. Uh, Absolutely. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so is that what shameless is about. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Help and Music Company and to uh, Mr. Matt Van Voorst. And, of course, uh, Alex would like to uh, thank uh, his sponsor, who keeps him off the booze. And that's uh, Michael Kreiner <laughs> from Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> oh, I appreciate the sponsors. Thank you for me also. Yeah. Uh, John I beat Johnson, you to that blatant Yeah, John stuff. Johnson, magician.com. <laughs> uh, my phone number's on there. You can call me. You can text me. If there's any bands, uh want to add a little variety to uh, what they're doing, um, easy to get a hold of, easy to get along with. Anybody's having an event, want to spice it up. I'm hoping yeah. to get out and do some street magic at farmers markets and events. Nice. So if anybody's interested in that, I'll get a hold of you. I'll soon, probably yeah. be reaching out to some of you for that. 
Uh, so I, you know, I like to get out and have fun and make sure everybody has fun. It's a, a family friendly show. Yeah. And uh, it's it's good stuff. Pigpen's got a festival. He might hire you to do something. I, when he was talking about the swinging <laughs> fire bowls, I was like, oh, we, we might have to. Uh, you How about know. a psychedelic uh, magician show? That's what he'd need. Yeah. And you just never know what other kind of strange. Oh thing. man, uh, he's uh, got a what is that? I mean, a bear it's trap? A bear trap? This <laughs> is, uh, it's, it's an animal. There's trap. A, oh, it's a pig trap. <laughs> <laughs> now I know what's going on. <laughs> animal trap. Yeah, I, I smell mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so it's uh, the real deal. So. Uh, Maybe you're out sometime. I may be doing something with an animal trap. So you set, person you and set the cards. trap. And, folks, it is. Oh, yeah. And he took the rope and stuck it oh, in really? the trap, and it snapped. Yeah. yeah. It's Just a, to, it's to let us know. Like, yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a mini bear trap. All right. Yeah. It's I a pig trap. I don't want to hear anymore. that. It's a mini bear trap. It's a pig lit trap. Okay. <laughs> it's a little small for a <laughs> So it's pig pile not, trap. I mean, I'm attracted to oddities, which is <laughs> probably why I'm here with you guys. Right? So. <laughs> Been down to Mineral Springs, probably. <laughs> yeah. right. So that's uh, you know, that's one of the things. Uh, some of the objects I mentioned earlier, the slide of hand with common objects, and also some uncommon things. Yeah. yeah. So, so what are you going to do with that trap? Can you do some kind of trick for us? Well, right you know now? what. I'm going to force your hand. If you want to see something in the animal trap, you'll have to get a hold of me. And, oh, okay. Uh, or come down Saturday, maybe. Hey, yeah, man. I won't be doing this Saturday, but uh, you can certainly come down because I'll be doing some other uh, unusual things. Nice. Hey, it's magic, you know. It's magic. How about it's a, out of the ordinary. How about a card trick before you before you get out of here? Go, uh, get uh, Pigpen involved somehow. Make him pick a card, you know, the old-fashioned something or other like that. How about that? <laughs> uh, All right. Right Our, now, I've make just got Pigpen pin pick his nose. That'd be oh, great. No, no, we want to, no. <laughs> oh, he hey, wanted to do clean that. Clean off your hand. I should have known better. Come on, clean off I, your hand. I was hoping somebody <laughs> would ask me to do that. <laughs> it's like I needed to clean that out. It was getting clogged up. <laughs> just tell me when to stop. Okay, I'm flipping through the cards, and Pigpen right. is going to tell me vocally right. when to stop. Stop. Okay, do you want to change your mind? I can go nope. further. I nope. can start nope. over. Right there. Okay, right there. Let's see. You stopped there. Well, I saw that one. Take the face down one. Okay, don't show it to me. Don't right. show it to me. All right. Do you have it? I do. Right. Okay, put it back. All right. There. Okay. Now I'm going to try and read back. your mind. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try and read your mind. Uh, think about your card because that'll help I'm me. Thinking about okay, it because I'm reading your mind. I am. Okay, yeah, don't He's try and trick me. Don't think about the card. Else. All right. He's not I'm thinking, thinking it's. Card. Well, it has to be red or black. But I'm thinking black. It is. You know, I saw the headphones. Maybe, maybe that's what made me yeah. say black because it has black headphones on. You can look uh, right at me and say black. It's uh, okay. I mean, it's. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't mind. I, I don't get offended. It wasn't the I'm, first I'm thinking, time. I'm thinking high or low. I I have to go low, and that's not a personal dig. Mm, that's all right. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, we're low. Uh, low. Low. It is. Okay. Well, we have clubs or spades. Oh. Uh, man, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to go club. There you go. I'm you go got low it. club. I don't know. It just it just jumped out me two of clubs. There it is. Two wow. of clubs. Two exactly clubs. what it was. Two of clubs. That's it. Yeah, I, I wanted that's to show it? it to the camera, but I was afraid he would see it if right. I did that. Oh, yeah. you want it to show it was, two of clubs it, to no, the camera? No, no, it wasn't. I mean, I mean, it didn't no, matter. he's got it. There, there, there it is. Two of clubs. I've been sitting here shuffling the deck, as you can see on the camera. I, yeah. I watched that. I was, uh, we can shuffle. We can cut, and we'll do all every sorts every time. Of it's going to come up two of clubs. Boom! There's that two of clubs. Yeah. Wow. Once again. And, and show them the deck to show them it's all not all two oh, of clubs. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not all two of clubs. It's not that old trick. That See? would be cheating. I'm a magician. I never cheat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it to your ex-wife. No, I don't. <laughs> all right, now do that bit Harry Anderson used to do where he saws his arm and it starts bleeding. <laughs> What is it? We only like it when John hurts himself. Could you eat some fire? I know you weren't prepared, but here. You ever try to cook inside your mouth? (laughs) Like put the meat in there, then put the fire on top, and that way. Wait a minute. How about we? Now, now here's the thing, though. You you prepared for all this magic. You've spent hours, just like he was saying with the guitar player, yeah, which how, is the parallel. How about yes. if we try some unprepared magic and we just get to throw lit matches at you and see if you catch on? And you try not to not catch on fire. You no, know, I, I can reach you from here. <laughs> he truly <laughs> can. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I can still reach. He's got long arms. 
Yeah. Oh, well, there I appreciate we go. you coming in and uh, oh, sharing absolutely. a couple of magic uh, tricks. Uh, for those listening in on the radio tonight, you can catch it all on YouTube tomorrow. So uh, cool. and we'll have the video at cottonmouth.org. We'll put it on the uh, the Big Z's uh, Facebook page as well. And, and on Sunday, I'll share it on, face- on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Next week sometime. Next, next, sometime. It'll come into pig piles. Uh, <laughs> Circle. <laughs> whatever it's called. Big uh, piles pen. Hey, yeah, yeah. Th- throw out those uh, websites once again. All right, John. John Johnson Magician dot com uh, and for the and for got the, some great artwork on there. That's for the magic, of course, and yeah. for the for the technical web uh, construction for the web uh, digital marketing, internet marketing. Help with your website to drive more business to your business using online using magic. Yeah, the magic of online. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Infobankmedia seo dot com. Uh, right, and, and if and as right opposed now, to info wars, that's or, a totally different. Or thing. <laughs> if you just would search for Alton SEO, you're going to find, find me right. number one. And he proved that to us that, yeah, uh, in Google. And, and how is it that you guys see? That's how I promote that? it. Did you use a service to make you number one on that site? Yeah, no, it's called me. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. Of course. Uh, uh, the whole time we've been doing this, I know you guys have been talking. I've been trying to He's Illuminati. The whole time the car song, uh-oh, it's magic, is just going on in my head. Yeah. And I don't know why. It's, yeah. it's better than abracadabra, I guess. All right. So let's uh, – let's, uh, So how long have space you space been with the Illuminati? <laughs> Some motorhead's been going through my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Space! <laughs> but that's yeah. Space. Seven or 11. You win some, you lose some. It's all the same to me. Yeah, there you go. So uh, uh, Saturday night, Greg Heiss, Jay so- Sabo, the Mad Baileys with John Johnson down at Woo! the Lovejoy Lodge. He'll be lighting himself on fire. Impossible. We don't know what he's going to do. And then dunking himself into a small wine glass, which is an amazing trick. He shrinks himself down and actually like dives into, into the wine right. while he's on fire. The high dive platform is being built <laughs> while we speak. <laughs> It's amazing uh, how you shrink your head down like that. <laughs> I like to get small. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're tall. You're tall. I know it's tough for me, but I can do it. Yeah. You ever get to travel to Asia? I bet that just seems incredible. Like everyone's knee high to you. No, they'd think I was Godzilla or something. Oh, uh, Godzilla! Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Love, but yeah, that's I've had. I've had. He's breathing fire. He's huge. Yeah, <laughs> he is yeah. Godzilla. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And and in Nephilim. the morning, I may be a little on the green side. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, uh, part of the Nephilim race. <laughs> <laughs> did you did your race build these mounds? That's a question I have. These mounds all around. I would uh, I would love to be able to go to uh, Japan and Asia. I have not been. <laughs> I have been to every state except Hawaii. Oh, and wow. uh, we're gonna have to some make other that countries, happen. but yeah. I have we'll not. S- been we'll get some sponsors. To to and send you to Hawaii. Yeah. And then all you got to do is get drunk with the Japanese guy, and he'll want to take you back to Japan You'll be just so to prove close, yeah. he can outdrink a six foot six American. Uh, uh, and you think I'm challenge. kidding about that? That is literally what happens oh, in yeah. Japan. Oh, I can drink uh, more than you! Come on, Godzilla! Uh, uh, yeah. Well, if I was in Hawaii, maybe I could grab a surfboard, catch a tsunami, and there right. you go. Many man. times when go. I was in Japan, though, that that was the that was if I wanted the to go out drink. drinking for free, you just found a, a Japanese guy who wanted to out drink you. Yeah. And he would try as hard as he could. And he usually won because I didn't drink whiskey like they did over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, that's, like I said, I've, I've heard about that. And uh, uh, one of my friends from the circus, uh, he was also, he was a big cat trainer, an elephant trainer. And he was with uh, the Ringling Brothers Circus over in Japan mm-hmm. for uh, quite a while. And, and, well, he had some stories. Let's just leave that. that. The bet. cool part is when he calls his wife and she comes and picks you up and doesn't complain and just takes you back. And takes care of you the rest of the night. <laughs> like, yeah. That makes you some rice and sake. Yeah, everybody gets well. <laughs> yeah. So, that, uh, Jim, Jim Rose uh, sideshow, you seen that one? Yes. So, yeah. so, so one time, I, I was, what was the old theater in St. Louis? The American Theater. A uh, really young band. I can't think of the name of them now. They were pretty popular at the time. was playing there. Uh, and so I'm backstage uh, talking to them. Uh, Incubus, that was the name of him. Incubus. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that band. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm backstage, and the uh, dude at the time it was so weird because the drummer literally gets a backpack out and gets books out. I said, "What are you doing?" He goes, "Homework." I said, "You're in college." He goes, "No, high, high school." school. <laughs> and I and I said, "Dude, how do you get a gig like this if you're in high school?" He's like, "Oh well, I played Blue Man Group for two years, and they picked me up." I'm like, 
what, what was, at 14 you're playing with Blue Man? But anyway, I digress from that. I asked the, I asked the drummer, I said, hey, man, which way do I go to the restroom? Because we were in this backstage area. They didn't have its yeah. own private restroom. And he goes, oh, you know, he gives me these directions. And I'm going down the hall, not thinking much. I walk through these doors. And it stopped me dead in my tracks. I didn't. I couldn't even explain everything. I saw, I saw more weirdness at one time than I believe I'd ever seen in my entire life, and it was so overwhelming to me. Which I love weirdness. Like when it comes to getting weird, the high water mark's never high enough, right? And I had to stop and back out of the room. And as I did, I saw above it. It said Jim Rose Sideshow Backstage, and they were all backstage getting ready and sort of warming up. And I'm like. It was it was overkill to my senses, man. That that have you uh, have you oh, got to check out Mister Lifto? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Mister Mister Ingesto. You know that one? Oh yeah, that's so, that, that's the well, that's actually where the uh, term geek was that the geeks in the sideshows yes, yes. were ones that were that would eat things and regurgitate regurgitators. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he he takes a whole PVC plunger and plunges stuff into him and then sucks it back out and flops around for a few minutes. And uh, so I, I, I asked him, I, I said, how'd you come up with that trick? Like, how do you come up with that? And he goes, oh, just messing around at home. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's your home life like? Come like, on. What, what kind of messing around are you doing yeah. at home? Dude? All like, right. I kind of want to hang out, but kind of not. Yeah. <laughs> so, I had a lot of time on my hands, and I had a toilet plunger in my hand, and I thought, hey, why not? <laughs> I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? So here, here's a trick for you that no one's ever been able to perform. Oh, all right. On me. Get Pigpen to be quiet. <laughs> so <laughs> we can finish the show now. Good luck to you, sir. It's, oh, a, okay. it's only 10 after. We were only right. supposed to stop 10 minutes. And they ago. cut us off early last week. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually on up. time, but yeah. And in my we're mind, all things, things we must yeah. seek balance. But, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're out of time. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks so much, John. Oh, Johnson, good to see you again. Pleasure is all buddy. mine. Good to see both of you. Thank you very, very much. Absolutely. Everybody get down to the lodge at Lovejoy. Yes. Uh, check out John Johnson's Magic Show. Check out uh, some of the great stuff going on this weekend. And remember, so no matter what you're going to do, get out and support local music and art. And magic. And magic.